Um, I'd like to thank you all for coming to our, our new, what's new in the D-Star panel, and uh, uh, we're, we're honored to have a, a couple of guests, Robin Cutshaw, AE4RC, uh, and uh, John Hayes, K7VE, and uh, I'm going to add a few remarks at the beginning and at the end. So if we get squeezed a little bit, it'll be my, my, my presentation at the end. Um, so it's, this is an action-packed slide. Usually the first one isn't. But I want you to look at the cartoon. Uh, uh, that's by Gil Gildersleeve. Uh, he published cartoons in QST starting in 1927, up through the early to mid-60s. And uh, I encourage you, if you like hand cartoons at all, to buy the, uh, the book from QST uh, publications called Gill, a collection of classic cartoons from QST. So uh, uh, just a little plug for that. Uh, the other thing is we're going to be uh, talking about D-Star. And uh, just remember, D-Star is a registered trademark of ICOM Japan. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit really quickly about for people who haven't gotten the D-Star radio yet, but I'm not going to spend very much time. In fact, I've given myself about nine minutes here. Uh, uh, and then uh, Robin's going to talk about things that Robin does. And if, if you don't know, Robin is one of the reasons why D-Star took off in popularity, because he created D+, which is a way of linking repeaters together and creating reflectors to link those together. Uh, he, his company that he works uh, with, uh, Mo, created the Devo Downgo DVAP, uh, and other things, and he's got some new things to talk about. Uh, John is going to talk, he's, he's been around D-Star uh, almost from the beginning, and he's an inventor of a way of setting up groups that use call sign routing, and uh, very inventive. And then uh, he's also going to talk about mainly small Linux platforms for D-Star. Now I'm going to talk about some of the do-it-yourself topics that I always talk about. Um, so when we talk about digital, most of you know what we mean, but uh, digital has been in ham radio since, what, CW, and certainly uh, radio teletype. But, uh, it went, you know, PSK31, keyboard to keyboard, a lot of people, uh, that is digital. But what we're talking about instead is not PSK30 and, and, and those types. Of, we're talking about digital voice and digital data. Uh, I guess the acronym stands for Digital Smart Technologies for Amateur Radio. Uh, it's a standard that was facilitated by the Japan Amateur Radio League, uh, to brought in, bringing together uh, multiple companies. And uh, it's an open standard for the over the, uh, over the uh, air, the RF protocol. Um, ICOM uh, was the, the main, well, it was the, the main company over there that took up the standard and actually made radios. And they had to then create some standards or uh, techniques for connecting repeaters together. Uh, so there's a lot of ICOM here, but it's this is the, st the protocol over the air is not ICOMs. It's, it belongs to JAR, uh, even though they have registered the trademark ICOM has. Uh, uses a GMSK uh, as the way of modulating the FM signal with forward air production. I'm not going to be real technical in this really quick run through. What's, what I think is good about D-Star is that the clean audio is clean, no static. Uh, you can see the call sign of the other person. Uh, they can optionally put in a short message that you'll see scroll across your LCD screen on your radio. Um, it's easy to link to other repeaters and reflectors around the world. You can find another ham who's last used some particular repeater using call sign routing. You can send small data files on uh, two meters and 70 centimeters, uh, it's not, you can't send anything real fast, but you can, and there are some people who have used it to send small spread, spreadsheets and very, you know, emails and forms. Um, the, in at 1.2 gigahertz, uh, you, you, you are allowed to send faster and you can send larger files that way. Um, brief history of uh, D-Star and George KJ6VU uh, put this slide together, uh, but, you know, the JARL kind of published the D-Star spec. By 2004, ICOM was rolling out the first radios. 
Uh, and the early adopters were having fun, but uh, I'm guessing there was a struggle there just to get everything who, that was new working, and then people used call sign routing. By 2006, the usage was beginning to ramp up. I remember going to uh, Dayton uh, Invention and, and starting to see the, the buzz. Um, and we still had the, the G1 gateway, the ICOM uh, gateway. It was in 2008 that the G2 gateway came out. Many new technologies. Um, and when would you say the D plus was kind of people are starting to use it? 2006, 7. 2006, 7. So that was really the beginning of the <coughs> take getting off the ground, really. Um, so by 2012, we have around 25,000 users that are registered. That means we probably have more users that are using systems that well, they don't have to register. But this is a good a good uh, number to track because we can track it over the years. Um, around 975 um, uh, ICOM gateways. Uh, we started in 2012 seeing people using third-party add-ons, new software. So you can kind of see, uh, DSTAR has been going like heck. Um, and that's really my main message. Now, I'm just going to mention, when you think about a DSTAR radio, what do you think of? This is what I think of. Um, it's not really different. If you look at the far right, there's an FM modulator, an FM discriminator, and it's all packaged up, the three boxes to the right are really an FM radio. So the D-Star part is the part on the left, the, the non-colored ones. And you can see there's a mic converting the, the radio to analog to digital. It gets compressed. Uh, the, the, the standard says to use a certain uh, chip that has a, a compression codec routines on the chip. Um, and then those, those, that digital signal is now compressed, gets uh, uh, tones are generated by the GMSK modem portion of the radio, and it's fed into the modulator, and out it goes. And it's just the other direction coming back when you're listening. So that's it, and there's really not a lot of mystery there. Um, I'm just showing one slide here, not to tell, tell you how to, if you have a D-Star radio, how to, you can, you can do, use d plus to, to link. But just to point out, this is one very popular way people are using D-Star. Yeah, they can talk simplex to their friend down the street. Yes, they can talk to their local repeater straight in and, and, and people in the area. But, but you can, uh, most ad, many admins allow you to, to send radio commands, auto commands to uh, link your, um, uh, that repeater to some other repeater or to a, a reflector, a conference server. Uh, and um, uh, so this, this, is, uh, this is by far and away the thing that made people get more interested. So the other night, it was midnight, and I was uh, done working on the presentation, and I just flipped on the radio, and I, um, I had the, my, my local system connect to a reflector in London, and I'm talking to some guy who's, you know, a London cabbie, you know, uh, and uh, it's just, you know, you can always find somebody to talk to. It, that's, I guess, that's what I like about it. Um, and, and if you think about it, what's happening is, in a way, the digitized voice going over the internet to connect from repeater to reflector and reflector to repeater and then back out on RF, uh, that is really voice over IP not the way people traditionally think of it, but that is. So I have a little plug here. Kent Johnson, who is the uh, host, who he hosts the Reflector 14. Uh, and around here, a lot of uh, repeaters are hooked to Reflector 14C or 14 Charlie. Uh, uh, he points out that the VOIP conference that, that's part of MCOM West uh, is held every year in Reno. And this coming year will be on Friday, the May the 3rd. It covers all the VOIP modes, including DSTAR. So that's good for you to know if you live in the area. It's a whole day long. Whole day long, right, all day. Uh, there's also weekly net on Reflector 14B, uh, the Pacific Division ARES, and it's every Thursday at 6.30. So uh, I want to thank uh, Kit for, uh, for bringing that up. 